Hi there, it's Andrew Burke from Code School Halifax again. And now that we've set ourselves up a HTML page with tags and structure, and we've even made it look not too bad with some CSS, it's time to do part three, which is JavaScript. We're going to take a bunch of episodes to get the hang of all the stuff that's going on with JavaScript. But basically, the HTML has been the what, the CSS has been the how does it look, and the JavaScript is going to be, what does it do? So we've got the three different things we're going to do, and we're going to get rolling with it right away. OK, hang on. OK, here we go. We've got ourselves our HTML page, which we've been doing for the last little while. It's got all of our tags and our content. And we've got our CSS file that's been decorating and acting on the HTML that we've created. And it's led to a fairly decent little web page we've got here. Now is time to do part three of the three-part epic that is web development, and that is JavaScript. Now, the next few sessions are going to cover JavaScript because there's quite a bit to cover. But we're going to start with the basics and move on from there. Now, you can add JavaScript into a page directly, just like we had with CSS, like I told you in the CSS uh, episode previously. However, just like with CSS, it's usually not a good idea to just stick JavaScript mixed in with all your other stuff on the page. There's a few cases where you might have to, but usually you want to not do it this way. You want to set up a separate JavaScript file and then link it in to the page in the head section, just like we did with style sheets. That lets you reuse code across different pages and also just keeps things clean. So your JavaScript's all in one place, just like your HTML is all in one place, just like your CSS is all in one place. Let's get rid of that, go back to where we were, and we put it up here. So the way you do it is you just do a little tag, a script tag, and you say source, and you tell it the file that it's at. And once again, we don't have the file yet, so we'll uh, put the name in here. Hopefully we get it right. And then we close that tag, and it's unlike this, which is a self-closing tag, this has to be this. It's also script source equals rather than link rel, you know, anyway, once again, this was all made by a committee or several committees over many, many years. So this is how it works. But now it's our chance we can actually add our new scripts file. Okay. And as soon as we type the name scripts.js, you'll see the little icon changes to a little JS. So now we have scripts.js, index.html has a little tags, and styles has a little hashtag thing. OK, so there's our scripts file. There's our index.html. And if we do anything else, I'd just like to make sure everything works still. Yep. OK. So now we can put all of our JavaScript code right in here. OK, so first one we're going to do here is just say, just like we had when we did our very first HTML, we said, hello world. Now we're going to do something with our JavaScript, just hello world. OK, so we've just saved that. And if we reload the page, it should give us a big alert box that says, hello world. There it goes. OK, we've now made it do something. I like to think of uh, JavaScript as sort of like the verbs of a thing. So if HTML is the nouns, you know, the, the, the things you're building, the content, uh, maybe CSS is kind of like the adjectives, and JavaScript is the verbs. So we told it to do something. It's made an alert box. It says, hello world. OK. And that all happened right there. Because we put it in here, we linked the file, and there we're good. Now, as we get moving on this, once again, like we had before, uh, we want to be able to see lots of things at the same time often. And it's good to sort of rearrange things a little bit. So depending what you're working on, I like to have usually the main part I'm working on as large as possible, uh, and then the other parts further down. But you can sort of move scripts you know, up to here have your content down here. You can still look at it. Your CSS is here. I find CSS is narrow. HTML and JavaScript tend to be wider. So I tend to like to break them out like this. And a little side note, a quick and easy thing, just use the command plus and minus. I think it's control plus and minus on Windows to make things bigger or smaller if you want. Uh, if you're running out of space on your screen, I have my font pumped up a little bigger than I usually would just because I want to make sure it's visible on these videos. But if you do want to make things bigger or smaller so you can get more focus or see more things, you know, feel free to use that. So here's our scripts. Um, we've got our hello world. Now that's kind of nice, but it's kind of intrusive. It stops everything on the page. It means you can't interact with it or even scroll. It's just this big box that says, ah, hello world. 
So that's not all that exciting. Let's do a slightly different version. And instead of hello, hello world with an alert, let's do something called console.log. Hello world. Okay, save that and then reload. And we don't have anything going on, it seems. Now this is where we can unlock some of the special powers that you probably didn't know your browser had. So remember way back in the early HTML thing where we, we poked around and were able to look around and change some of the content in the, in the page? Well, we can still use some of that backend stuff for other things too. So if you go to your inspect element, so you might have to go into your preferences to set this properly. Uh, it's usually somewhere in some window or there may be a develop menu or a view developer tools or something like that. Every browser is slightly different. But the easiest way I find is wherever I'm at, I just go to inspect element. And we did that, some of that before. And you can see here the different sections get highlighted and that's all great. I think we talked about that previously. And now that we've done a bit more CSS, you can actually see here the blue is the content, the green is the padding, and the orange is the margins. So when you're doing complicated layout, it's nice and easy to be able to come through and sort of see where the margins and padding are. Remember we added some extra margin at the bottom of the tagline there, and you can see the extra space there. So this is kind of a useful way to be able to see what's going on. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here for some of this other stuff that's up here. So we have debugger, timeline, storage, canvas, audit, and console. Okay, remember this says console log? Well, this is console. And right now it's currently set to show only errors. Let's make it say all. Okay, we got a bunch of things in here. Let's just clear this out for now because we're starting fresh. Okay, you might need, sometimes it's over here if you're in, um, in Chrome, but in, in Safari it's over here. You can also usually use Command K if you're on a Mac. I'm not sure what it is on Windows, which will also clear the thing. And now let's reload our page. And it said, hello world. And there's a little, that's supposed to be a log file. So logs or consoles are basically outputting things. And it even tells you, where does this live? Scripts.js1, scripts.js line one, okay? So it even tells you what outputted that, which is kind of handy if you have a lot more things. Let's do another one just for kicks. Console log, this is JavaScript. Okay, script number three line three, because it's line three here. Okay, so this is really handy uh, because you can now send little messages out that don't interfere with the way that the actual app runs or the web page runs or works. It just shows stuff in the background and in a background panel where most of the time, most, usual, most regular users won't know it's there. Uh, what's kind of fun is if you have console open while you're looking at other pages, uh, you'll often see little notes left over from the programmers who forgot to turn things off or wanted to have some extra diagnostic stuff. So it's kind of fun sometimes if you're looking at websites and you can see little messages passing by that are that are that you weren't supposed to see. Anyway, the console uh, is also lets you type things right in here as well. So you can just do console log. And it will do exactly the same thing as it would if it was code right here. So this is really handy. This is known as a REPL, which is a read, evaluate, print loop. Anyway, this is one of those technical terms, REPL. But it basically means you can type stuff in here and it'll give you the reply if there is one and any return value, which most of the time will be undefined depending on what you're doing. Uh, but you can just type stuff in here and it even knows the context of your page so you can actually interact with elements on the page. And what I often do is I'll play with stuff in the REPL here in the console to make sure I've got things working right before I then actually put it into my JavaScript on the page. So that's kind of handy. But I'm just going to show you a few things. So JavaScript uh, is a programming language. It lets you do all sorts of regular old programming language things. So you can do math. Okay. I type five plus two. It gave me the answer seven. Okay. And it even lets you store that in a little temporary holding place if you want to. So, whoops. Seven, okay? Um, typo there by accident. Okay, you can do all sorts of math. Five minus two, okay? Five times two. Multiplication is done with a star for complicated historical reasons. And five divided by two, 2.5, okay? So and a divided by is also, uh, you can't use a division symbol. You have to use a slash once again for historical reasons. But anyway, you get used to it. And you can do fairly arbitrary math um, divided by 12.5 to the power of six. 
Okay, I don't know, maybe seven, that seems wrong, but whatever. Um, okay, 1.2, yeah, sure. Okay, anyway, uh, you get the idea. I'm not gonna, this is not gonna be a math lesson because I've forgotten most of the math I did back in the day. But you can sort of see that actually this is handy if you're uh, working on a computer and you need access to a calculator quickly to do something. You can pop open a browser window and just uh, start typing in there if you want. Now that's about 10 minutes worth of kind of intense introduction to JavaScript and introduction to programming possibly for a lot of you out there. And I originally had thought about doing like a 45 minute intro to everything JavaScript all in one big long video, but I think it's better broken up into smaller bite-sized pieces. So that's what I've done here. Uh, this is a 10 minute intro to the very beginning basics of some fundamentals. And we're then gonna have another one coming up which will cover all the data structures and things of JavaScript. Feel free to take a break, obviously, between these, and feel free to go back and actually try this. The, these are designed to have you type along with me. Uh, you know, it's not like playing along on a guitar. You don't have to be super skilled. Uh, feel free to pause it, rewind it, etc. if you want to catch up on things. And what's great with the console as well in the browser is you can't really break anything. Just type stuff, see what happens, see what comes back. If you feel like you've made a mess, just reload the page and it all totally resets. So no stress, no pressure kind of thing, but lots of, lots of cool things you can play with, a nice little playground. Anyway, we're going to get into the next up soon, which will be data structures, arrays, objects, and variables, and other fun stuff like that. Okay, stay tuned.